The race for the White House now entering the home stretch. Donald Trump looking to close the gap with Hillary Clinton, but an analysis of the polling data suggests it might be too little too late. Can Donald Trump defy the odds? We'll have a debate on that. And then this wild card in the election. Word that Gary Johnson is on track to get the most votes of any third party candidate in decades. Could he be the spoiler who shapes the outcome of the race? Plus, President Obama reacting to an apparent snub overseas. What he's saying about the dispute in China that almost had officials coming to blows. All ahead in the next hour. Hello, I'm Greg Jarrett in for Shepard Smith. As Americans celebrate Labor Day, there is no holiday downtime for Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump today. Labor Day, the unofficial kickoff to the campaign's final phase. And today, both candidates making campaign stops in the crucial swing state of Ohio. As her campaign had promised, Labor Day marks the first time that Hillary Clinton allowed journalists on board her plane, her team debuting a new bigger jet to mark the occasion. Critics, of course, have called out Clinton for lack of access to reporters, but today she surprised them in the back of the plane, telling them she's ready to begin the, quote, mad dash to close out the campaign. I am so happy to have all of you with me. Have you missed I've been us? just waiting for this moment. <laughs> and I'm thrilled. No, really, and I'll, and I'll come back, talk to you more formally, but I wanted to welcome you on to the plane. Well, you can catch the whole tape online and uh, kind of awkward at times. More on Clinton in just a bit. In the meantime, Donald Trump's campaign manager says the billionaire can win the election without the battleground state of Pennsylvania. Really? Well, Donald Trump has spent months campaigning in the state, but still struggles in the polls. His campaign manager seemed to say, hey, no big deal, and that there are several different paths to victory. Can you win this race without Pennsylvania? We can, but we're taking Pennsylvania very seriously. We know the last six presidential elections has gone Democratic, uh, and, that's, and that's something that we understand. But we also know that Mr. Trump's message from the beginning has been particularly resonant among a lot of the working, and a lot of the workers who feel like they've been left behind in this economy. Well, here's a look at the polls in that state. The Real Clear Politics average shows Trump trailing Clinton by about seven points in Pennsylvania, 47 to 40 percent. It's a little closer in Ohio. The RCP average showing Clinton is leading there 44 to 41 percent. Well, for more than half a century, every candidate who won Ohio has gone on to the White House. But this year, Clinton may not actually need to win Ohio because of her strong positions elsewhere. We have Team Fox coverage, Mike Emanuel following the Clinton campaign in Cleveland. But first, to Peter Ducey in Canfield, Ohio, where Donald Trump toured a fair. Hey, Peter. And Greg, you look behind us, you can see at the fair there are a lot of people very excited to see Donald Trump. He's made a few stops in Cleveland about an hour away from here already today, and he's touched on all of the trademark Trump issues with a special emphasis on the economy. I'll tell you what, we owe right now almost $20 trillion. It's doubled under Obama, and we have to straighten out our country. The big thing to me, because I get, you know, actually I get a lot of tremendous credit with immigration. And people know that. People understand. The big thing for me, we have to bring our jobs back to this country. But we're not going to have a country left. Trump also very aggressively went after President Obama for the way he reacted to rude diplomats in China a few days ago, saying that if he was treated that poorly abroad, he would have just turned around and left town. He does have his running mate in town as well with him today, in Ohio, I should say, uh, and he made a joke about how Pence is perfect for him since they are polar opposites. And it does sound like uh, Donald Trump must be in sight here uh, now at the Canfield County Fair. Greg? You know, Peter, he's still trying to explain his deportation aspect of the immigration plan. And Trump, speaking of which, really went after Republican Senator Jeff Flake of Arizona. Talk to us. Right. So Flake, he just does not think is giving him enough support out in Arizona where immigration is a big issue. So last night, Donald Trump took to Twitter and he wrote that, quote, the great state of Arizona, where I just had a massive rally, amazing people, has a very weak and ineffective Senator Jeff Flake. Sad. That came because yesterday in the morning, Jeff Flake said this. Well, it, it becomes increasingly difficult to, to see that he's going to change. 
Uh, so I, I don't expect uh, that I'll be able to support him in, in November. And I'd like to. He's the Republican nominee. I just don't see how I can. So immigration, the big issue there in Arizona, but also, believe it or not, it's the big draw at the Canfield County Fair uh, behind this crush of people right now who are expecting to see Donald Trump. They are building their own wall. Uh, th they're not asking Mexico to pay for it, though. They are uh, just asking people for $5 donations. You give five bucks, you get a brick to put your name on it. Uh, and now we're going to wait and see if Mr. Trump himself wants to come and see the wall they built for him in Ohio. Greg? Wow. I, I thought Mexicans were supposed to pay for the wall. All right, uh, Peter Ducey, thank you. Bernie Sanders hitting the campaign trail for the first time. For his former rival, Hillary Clinton, he's about to take the stage in the battleground state of New Hampshire, right next door to his home state of Vermont. Yesterday, Sanders told NBC News that Clinton should cut all ties with her family's foundation if she wins the White House. The Democratic nominee has faced criticism over emails between the foundation and her top aides at the Department of State. She insists, though, she never took any action as Secretary of State because of donations to the foundation. Team Fox coverage continues now. Mike Emanuel is live in Cleveland where Hillary Clinton was just campaigning. So, Mike, how important does Clinton's team say Ohio really is? Well, Greg, Ohio has a reputation for picking presidents. In fact, the University of Virginia Center for Politics says 28 out of the past 30 presidential elections, Ohio has gotten right in terms of supporting the ultimate winner. So that is a big reason why Hillary Clinton and Tim Kaine are here in Cleveland, Ohio, to launch the home stretch of this campaign uh, this afternoon here in Cleveland. It's also huge because if Clinton Kaine can win Ohio, it really limits the possible paths for Trump and Mike Pence to get to 270 electoral votes. Now, I'm not making any predictions other than to say that the fight to the finish here in Ohio is going to be big. And Tim Kaine told reporters a short time ago that the Democratic team expects to spend a lot of time here in Ohio in the coming weeks. Greg? You know, Mike, Vice President Biden praised Clinton's running mate Tim Kaine today. What did he say? Well, that's right. Vice President Joe Biden and Senator Kane were in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, another battleground, and Biden praised Kane's qualifications for the job of vice president. Two things you got to know about Tim. One is he has more experience in every branch of government than anybody's ever stepped into this job as vice president. And two, two, Hillary is going to really need him, not because she's not the smartest person to seek that office she is, but because the plate is so full. A lot of the Democratic Party's biggest names are out on this Labor Day trying to fire up Democratic support, union support. Right now, I've got Senator Kane on stage. We expect Se Secretary Clinton any moment now trying to fire up folks here in Cleveland. Greg? Mike Emanuel in Cleveland. Mike, thanks. Polls are showing that Donald Trump is closing the gap with Clinton as the campaign enters the final few weeks. But if history is any guide, Trump has a very tough task ahead. An analysis from the Wall Street Journal today found in the last quarter century, no candidate trailing in journal polls just before Labor Day has ever won the White House. Well, let's bring in our political panel. Morgan Ortega joins us, political strategist, former State Department press office, uh, officer, national co-chair of the conservative Maverick PAC. Julie Rojinski joins us, Democratic strategist, Fox News political analyst, former advisor to the late Senator, uh, New Jersey, Senator Frank Lautenberg. Good to see you both. Great to Happy see you. Labor Day. Thanks for coming day. in. Very nice of you. Julie, let me start with you. Um, so we played the clip of Kellyanne Conway, Trump's campaign manager. Did she make a mistake? You never, ever want to even suggest that we can win without your state. In this case, yeah. a really important, viable state of Pennsylvania, I, it sends the wrong message, doesn't it? Like, you're not important, we don't need you. You know, I love Kellyanne Conway, I've known her for a long time. She's a huge asset to the Trump campaign, but I do think she made a mistake in this case, because I, as you said, you don't concede anything, especially a swing state like Pennsylvania. She's sort of right that you can win without Pennsylvania. Certainly George Bush did it in 2004. Yeah, but you've got to win states like Colorado, Virginia, Florida, Ohio. And they're places, even further out of reach for Trump. Some of those places are definitely further out of reach. North Carolina, he's trailing in every single one of those states that I mentioned today. Uh, Morgan, I want to put up here, you know, Conway says, look, there are different paths to winning the nomination or to winning the presidency. And that's that's actually not quite true. Let's put up the Fox News decision desk electoral map. 
All right, so the dark blue are solid Clinton, light blue leaning Clinton. The yellow are toss-up states. Uh, the dark red is solid uh, Trump and, and the pink leaning Trump. Well, here's the deal. Uh, our decision desk analysis says this, quote, if Clinton wins the states, we've rated solid Clinton along with the states we see as leaning in her direction, she'd have 273 electoral votes. She, she could lose every single one of the toss-up states and still win. Listen, there is there is no disputing that when it comes to judging this campaign through the traditional lens that she wins. She's running, she has better fundraising numbers, she has more statewide offices open. So what Donald Trump has to do is to make peace with the fact, he and his campaign, that they're not running a traditional campaign, right? They're going to have to, I think, get quite ugly in order to win this. What do I mean by that? In these swing states, in the states that are close, where she did have an eight-point lead, in a lot of the states like North Carolina, it may be a three or four-point lead, yeah. he needs to run a lot of ads in those states going after the things that hurt her, yeah, but he's not, not doing only regional it. He's budgeted voters. $1 million in the state of Pennsylvania. Clinton has budgeted $20 million, and she's just getting started. She is, again, but that is the traditional way to look at this campaign. If the election were held today as a Republican, I would be nervous about the results. But there's a few things that I think are going in Trump's favor if the campaign takes this seriously. One is he still has three debates. Now, Hillary Clinton is a master debater. She's got a command of policy and the facts more than yeah. anybody. But he's going to, again, have to hit her in a way that's not pretty, All right. going after character. Let me ask you to pause there for just a moment. Here is uh, Donald Trump. Let's listen in just a bit in Canfield, Ohio. Thank you, everybody. All right, he, he was talking about bringing jobs back to Ohio, um, which obviously is a very important issue. Julie, um, when you look at the Fox News polls that came out a few days ago, that's the number one issue, the economy. And, and by the way, immigration to the very bottom, just 4%. Economy and jobs is 30%. He's talking about jobs today. But look at what he's been focused on the last few weeks. He's been talking about immigration, as you pointed out, not the top issue for swing voters at all, or definitely voters that he's trying to bring over. He's been talking about, he's going after Jeff Flake, Republican of Arizona, in a tweet. His, he's not yeah. focused on the message he needs to be focused on. If he were to laser focus on the economy the way he should, this would be a competitive race because there's a lot to go after the Obama administration on, but he's not doing that. He's completely off message. And to Morgan's point, not only is he not raising money to run ads, he's got virtually no field staff to get out the vote of the voters. Yeah, for example, to get to the in Pennsylvania, she's got 3,461 volunteers. She's got 30 offices. And Republicans are out there saying in Pennsylvania, where are you, Trump organization? Nowhere to be found. You're hurting my heart today as a Republican. Because <laughs> in Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Florida, Ohio, not only does Trump need those states, the Republican Party needs to win crucial Senate and re-election uh, seats. When you look at Ohio, there's hope there because Portman is running an amazing campaign. He's doing well in the polls despite all of the headwinds against him. Um, what Julie just said about Senator Flake is another important point. If uh, Trump still actually hasn't solidified the Republican electorate, the entire electorate behind right. him, him. Right. So if he can get another five to eight points of those Republican behind him, that's going to help continue to help in these crucial right. states. I got to take a break. You guys are going to stick around. <laughs> You're very kind to do this on, yeah. on Labor Day. Uh, Donald Trump will not get the endorsement of a major newspaper in a key swing state. That's now endorsed every Republican presidential nominee for three decades. Well, not Trump. Instead, the paper's backing the libertarian nominee, Gary Johnson. And another major newspaper predicts that Johnson could be one of the most successful third-party candidates in American history. We'll take a look at how he could shake up the race next.